Furious Driving, presented by Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. And like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Hello. Welcome to Furious Driving and for what is probably the last time working on the Beetle. We are working on the Beetle, but as everything is now done on the outside, today we're going to step inside the eye of this modified Mark IV Golf which is, to be honest, actually in pretty good condition. There's not a lot that needs to be done in here, but there are a couple of things which sitting here in the driver's seat do really kind of nag on me, and I'm sure the next owner will feel the same. They're not biggies, but they are irritating. So first of all, we have got, as I mentioned when I first got the car, someone has drilled a hole in this dash panel in order to fit, I guess, probably a sat-nav or something at some point in the past. There's a second screw hole over here and loads of scratches. It's, it's not the end of the world, but it's really annoying. It's right in your eye line. Secondly, I kind of didn't notice this at first, but this steering wheel is really heavily worn. But considering the mileage on the car is about 130, I think. I can't turn it on because I've just disconnected the battery. Um, but this is actually surprisingly badly worn. And also the paint is all gone from here and here. So this is massively, massively annoying. So when I was up at the Volkswagen Beetle Breakers up near Coventry, I did a bit of extra shopping. And instead of junk from the trunk, today we're doing treats from the back seat, which is how I'm going to have to rebrand junk in the trunk until the V8 comes back. First of all, I picked up this which is a new dash panel. Uh, so we can replace that broken, scratched up one, which would be a good thing. And second of all, and the reason we've got the battery disconnected on the car right now, is we've got this, not just going for a straight swap, going for an upgrade to a nice leather wheel, which does look rather nice indeed. There's only a couple of very minor scratches and bits of wear on here, but I'll give it a quick polish up once it's fitted and it will look absolutely fabulous. I'm really not gonna wanna sell this car after that. <laughs> But you can see it's not got the bad wear on the wheel, it's not got the wear on the silver. So basically, massive upgrade in every respect. It fit was really nice as well. Damn, wish I wasn't selling this car. So first of all, let's do the dash panel in case I scratch anything when I'm taking the steering wheel off. Also, because I'm doing the airbag, the first thing I did was to disconnect the battery and let it sit. And so it will sit for at least an hour by the time I come to doing that. Half an hour is the bare minimum if you're gonna undo anything on an airbag. Disconnect the battery, let it discharge. You do not want that going off in your face. Okay, first of all, this. Right, so the first thing to do to get this side panel out is to take the center panel out because the screws are hidden underneath it. So what you need to do is put the camera down because it's definitely a two-handed job. Literally just push it forward and away it comes. Ta-da! Then under there you'll find you've got a pair of Torx screws. But these are a T20. And you just get that in there. Oops, a daisy. Quite a long way away. Feels like you're doing this very, very remotely indeed because it's more than an arm's length away. Undo one, undo the other. So pop those screws out and don't forget those little balancery things that go in underneath them. Now you might find you want to pull your flowers out for this bit so they don't get damaged. I'll put them in the back for now. Then with those screws out, this literally just pulls out sideways because the last thing holding it are a pair of pegs on the end, so you just pull it out that way. And that is, and that is that panel removed. It's a surprisingly sturdy bit of plastic. It's solid on top. It's got sound deadening all inside it. And it's really quite thick, much bigger than you would imagine. There's lots of clips all over it as well. So yeah, that is that gone. And then the new one, one literally just slots in there, in the peg holes, clanks down, dang there, and then screw it back in place. That is really very easy indeed. The only problem with this car is because the windscreen is just about four kilometres away from the driver's seat, you're doing this relatively easy stuff at absolute arm's length. Basically, if you drop anything, it's lost forever. And then to finish things up, all we do is pop this back in the other side of those little latches. You see it's got two slidey catches just there that go underneath those little hummocks there. A peg just there, 
pegs just there, the whole lot just slides together. Robert's your father's brother. And done, and that is the biggest improvement I think it's possible to make to this interior, apart from this, which we will do now. But wow, I'm just blown away with that. I've just noticed in doing this job, there's another screw hole just there. We'll pretend we didn't see that. Okay, so time to change the steering wheel, and I'll reiterate this again. Before you take anything with an airbag off, disconnect the battery, leave it for a minimum of half an hour, maybe a little longer if you've got time to do that, just for your own safety. Okay, so all this stuff actually came from an, uh, Volkswagen Beetle Breakers on eBay. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but um, if you just look for Beetle parts and find someone selling lots of them, that will probably be them. They were up near Coventry, they were incredibly helpful. Um, they actually showed me how to take one of these steering wheels off because I was looking around for it, and normally on the back of a wheel you can find a couple of screw holes or something in order to get the airbag out either to unscrew to unlatch or something on this one though it's really well hidden what you need to do take the steering lock off turn it 90 degrees and then you'll find them just there now the guy at the breakers did actually demonstrate this to me because it is incredibly easy but not intuitive and I've had to go and buy a couple of uh, airbag removal tools from Amazon actually. The reason I've not done this job until now is partly because the interior was going to get dirty again when I was sanding and painting outside. There's always lots of dust and also because I was waiting on this little tool to turn up. And this is a pair of little 90 degree L shaped things. And the idea is you feed one into each hole and give it a little twizzle out at the same time. And then the airbag just pops straight out. He did it in about 13 seconds. I'm going to be here for some time I think. Because basically it is purely by touch and I can't find it. Righty ho, the Amazon tool is going back because it's actually not long enough. That's uh, £17 not well spent. Uh, what I actually used was a small screwdriver with a broken off back end because I'll demonstrate on the other side what you have to do, dealing with it on the top side, you need to put angling the screwdriver upwards towards the outer edge of the steering wheel barrel because there's a, a spring clip up there, then you need to push it down towards the centre and you have to get right up in there, the blade flat against the top and then lever it down and then that will then pop out. Okay, and you're gonna laugh at this. I've had to quickly pop off the, um, the cowling and the uh, surrounding for the speedo because the tiny screwdriver I was using actually fell down inside the steering. Oh, we've got to scroll even further. It's fallen inside the dashboard and now I can't get to it and that's the last thing I had that would actuate this thing. Brilliant. It's now inside the car somewhere. The next owner of this car now gets a free screwdriver. Brilliant. Well, it's actually got worse in the last couple of minutes. That's how it should go and how it does go. Um, these things are just woefully inadequate and they are about a centimetre too short to actually reach the spring you're meant to be unlatching. The one screwdriver that had a long enough metal shaft and a narrow enough plastic handle is now somewhere in the bowels of the dashboard and everything else I own is in correct size. So I've taken a hacked Stanley knife to this bit of foam to try and get better access into this steering wheel and it still won't come off. I think this is basically too fat an end to get inside there and all the rest of the screwdrivers are um, just too big on the handle end to get, um, to get any leverage on it. This is very annoying. Right, okay, the airbag is now off. It took quite a lot of effort and basically every tool I possess, every screwdriver width and size I own, and eventually what I had to do was channel out enough of this foam on the side to get this frankly too short tool into here. Because what you're trying to do, I'll demonstrate this quickly for future reference, if you can see that spring in there, the straight one going left to right, that spring in there is clamping on the back of this point on here. And what you have to do is get your screwdriver or tool in there in order to release it. This though is incredibly tight and these tools for Amazon are about a centimetre too short. I measured it on this screwdriver, you actually need to go in that far in order to release it. And in the end, because it's such a tight fit and having channeled it, it took two of us to get this last one off. While my neighbour was um, prying on the tool, I was pulling on the airbag and wiggling it and eventually we got the thing free and that was an absolute pain. Now once you've got inside there, you will need a very specific uh, socket. This is an M12XZN spline piece. Um, so I've just actually had to nip down and buy one of these because this is not something I had in the garage. So I'll quickly open this and undo this. But before you undo that, do make sure you set the wheel straight on the dashboard. Otherwise, when you put the new one on there, your car will be driving down the road with a wonky steering wheel, which is the most frustrating thing on the planet. 
apart from people who drive 65 on the fast lane on the motorway. Actually, I stand corrected. The most annoying thing on the planet is not people who drive 65 in the fast lane of the motorway. It's people who correct you when you call it the fast lane and point out it's technically the overtaking lane. Everyone knows it's called a fast lane. It's not the real word. We know. Just, just don't, don't comment. Just keep it to yourself. Okay, so this is the M12 spline tool, which fits in here. Don't use a uh, Torx T55 because you will wreck stuff. Um, you might need to put the steering lock on actually for this. Okay, now the wheel is slightly off. Okay, there we go, and that is freed off. What you want to do at this point is slacken it off most of the way, but not all the way, because you're going to have to give the steering wheel a properly hard yank to get it off the dash. And when it comes away, it's going to come pretty fiercely. And if you want to keep all of your teeth in roughly the same location as in, in your mouth, it's quite a good idea to have this thing still on here on a couple of threads so that um, it doesn't actually uh, hit you in the face and hurt you. There are also a couple of earths on here to undo as well, so we'll just pop those off. Oops, there we go, so that can now come off without breaking those wires. Set that back to straight ahead. Oh, well it's actually really easy, okay fine. Normally those take a massive amount of force to remove. Okay, so that will now slide off of there. Bin. I have tried to recycle one of these before because they are an aluminium centre. The uh, recycling people do not want it. That goes in the bin. All right, feed your airbag wires and horn butt push buttons through that little hole on the top. Honestly, changing a steering wheel should take about 20 minutes, half an hour, absolute tops, probably even like 10 minutes if you've done one before. Um, honestly, this has been an absolute pain in the so and so because I've been out here most of the morning on this stupid wheel try undo, trying to undo a spring catch which should have undone in a matter of seconds. Can't get through there. The clock spring keeps rotating on the tension of the little wires that are going through it and <laughs> not let me actually connect up to it. There we go. Now to make sure the wheel is straight on the dashboard. Wind it in there. There we go. That is now straight on the dash. Let's pop these two wires back on so I don't forget them in a minute. The 90 degree one goes on there, the straight one goes on there. And I noticed there was actually some Loctite on there, so I quickly grabbed some Loctite out of the garage and then wind that back in. Here's a question, how come it's always easy to get the lid off a cap of thread lock? Mm -hmm. This is a German car, so we use to thing of good and tight. So we have now got a nice leather steering wheel, I'll put some black polish on that in a second, and we've got a nice silvery by well, the plastic but painted silver that hasn't worn off that looks lovely and i'm really hoping that's pointing in a straight on direction because the steering column didn't move and so it should be all good that's all screwed back together on the cowl and the trim and everything that's a t25 underneath there and a pair of very very tiny phillips head screws holding that cowl back together this then clips in here very carefully let's hope we don't have an airbag while we turn this back on this then snaps back in there Job done, just need to reconnect the battery. And this is all finished mechanically, just cosmetics now. Oh, by the way, clearing up the tools in here, I even went as far as trying to get a teaspoon to get this thing out because these tools were absolute junk. I'm going straight back on Amazon in a second. The moral of the story is, if you've got a decent motor factor anywhere near you, go and buy your stuff from them and <laughs> use Draper as well. That's a, a second thing, I'll stick this into the, um, affiliate link store down below in a minute. Um, I'm guessing they don't sell many of these, judging by the amount of dust on the top, but if you need it, you 100% need it. And JR's had this on the shelf behind the counter waiting to be bought. So thank you, JR's. Okay, battery reconnected. It uses these horrible clampy things, which actually break more than you would imagine when you try and get them tight enough. Let's just check we can turn everything back on with no lights on the dashboard. Cars in neutral. There we go. Handbrake, cold, that's all we've got there. So we'll just take a quick drive down the road, make sure it's all pointing straight. But it turns out trying to find a straight bit of road to check whether your um, wheel is on correctly is actually harder than you might imagine, but I think it's all right based on the randomly wiggling country lane I'm going down right now. Right, okay, so you'll notice the T-shelf is in full effect in here. It's an excellent T-shelf in this car. And now I'm going to smugly rebrand a good idea as a life hack. 
and use cherry blossom shoe polish to re-black the steering wheel because this is basically black leather like your shoes. Thing is though, you don't want to life hack your trousers because you have black marks all over your jeans if you do that. So be careful not to life hack yourself too much. I'm going to give it a little buff once it's dried. There we go, that can dry off for a minute. Ta-da! Black wheel. So while that does its thing and goes off now making hopefully this look a lot prettier and nicer, it doesn't look bad to start with, it just it makes it a bit more nicer. Got the latest item in Diamond Bright's impressive armory of cleaning equipment, I'm running out of words, I can't alliterate this. This is the interior trim enhancer. Unlike the previous generation of interior cleaner, which is like a real heavy duty, dirt lifting strong arm, this is a new product which smells deliciously of bananas and is great for leaving a lovely finish on the plastics and the rubbers. Make the whole car look and smell really rather nice. Oops, if I can reach over there. You need actually go go gadget arms to get to the back of this dashboard. It is insanely far away. Car smells nice, car looks nice, everything is nice. Oh yeah, and as about a thousand people have told me <laughs> after I did the W107 cleaning thing and I didn't set the uh, nozzle to spray, I had it on like a tight squirt. You can set these nozzles to a, a general spray. I just completely forgot that. It was a very silly day really. Lots of fun, just a very silly day. Whoa, too slippery. Oh, too far away. And there are just a couple of spots I want to go over with the Bissell, including the armrest, the passenger seat, and I'm not saying I knocked a cup of coffee over in the footwell yesterday, but I'm also not not saying I knocked a cup of coffee over in the footwell yesterday. So I'll just give these a quick spruce up, and then the thing will be pretty much done. Now these seats aren't particularly dirty and there's certainly no bad reflection on the previous owners of the car for making it dirty. This is just general use dirt that you get from using a car every single day. I wasn't going to bother doing this seat because I've got to drive it quite a long way uh, very soon. Um, but I thought it looks, you can just see there's a, a patina of, of dirt in there that needs to come out. And so I will do it and then just put the heater on. Considering this car was actually fairly clean to start with, that's a lot of goop that's come out of some, well, quite clean, clean looking seats. Honestly, I challenge you, if you go and do this to your own car, which you think is clean and sanitary, I guarantee you'll be shocked at the amount of brown bomb juice that will come out of your chairs. Yeah. So there we go, the interior is basically done now. We've got a nice new non-damaged dashboard up the top. We've got a lovely new steering wheel looking beautiful, soft touch feels and looks beautiful. I just hope they're not vegans who are buying this car from me, otherwise we've got an issue. I'm sure they're not. They would have mentioned it, probably. Seats drying out nicely. I've got the heater and the air conditioning running because that will dehumidify the cabin, suck the moisture out of there. Hopefully the seats will be dry enough that the MOT tester will not be annoyed so much by damp seats or give me a fail based on something spurious. I'll stick some towels on it. But yeah, I am basically very, very happy indeed with this car, which I really do like an awful lot. I've still not mopped it because the weather, as you can see, is raining quite a lot, so it's not conducive to uh, polishing a car particularly much. I have, though, between rainstorms, managed to get the lacquer coat onto that door at last, which now is flashing off and hopefully will be dry before the next rainstorm comes, because that'd be other annoying otherwise. Tomorrow is getting an MOT, and then the day after, going to its new home. So this is a rapid turnaround. There wasn't a lot to do to this car, just a few sort of niggly little things to sort out and just bring it up to how I would like it. In fact, if I was going to keep it, I would have done more. If it was going to be my car, I would have lowered it and put it on bigger wheels, and I've done a few more bits and pieces to really personalise it. I can definitely see the attraction of these things, because I really do like this Beetle a lot now. Just sorry, very, very sorry to see it go, but such is life. Can't keep them all. So if you've enjoyed this video, please, as always, hit like and subscribe and join me again next time. I was going to say doing something completely different, but it's almost certainly going to be the final video of the Beetle where we finally drive it away and reveal what we're replacing it with. Ooh, I wonder what that could be. Like and subscribe, head to furiousdriving.co.uk for mugs, t-shirts, magnets of all the cars, stickers, uh, calendars. The calendars are heavily discounted now because it's March. Yeah, tons of good stuff. And see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Furious Driving, presented by Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week.
and Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining. And you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. And like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below.